I'm AJ Whalen from SAP Insider. Most employees today are no longer simply just looking for a job. They're more often looking for a more rewarding work experience. And recent studies show that employers who focus on improving that experience often report more motivated employees and even reduced employee turnover. But for many SAP customers, I think the question about experience management isn't why to focus on it, but rather where do I begin? And I'm joined today by Christian Heinrich, Head of Product and Portfolio Management at Savanta. Savanta has a strong focus on user experience, including employee experience. And Savanta was founded in Heidelberg, Germany, has additional offices in Hamburg and in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Christian, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the background. So tell us a little bit about Savanta and your work in the experience field. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, I think first of all, in order to understand why why we so much focus on the on the topic of experience, we have to go back a little bit into history. And um, but Savanta was founded now ten years ago. Um, at that time, with a clear focus of really radically um, simplifying the people interact with business software. So our two founders directly came from SAP. So we had obviously all the time a strong uh, a strong focus on. Uh, on SAP and simplifying SAP experiences. And they really saw, okay, that the, the SAP in its core, they, they have everything. It's really, it's really, really powerful. But at the end of the day, it sometimes lacks this last mile to the user. And this is where a lot of the traction um, uh, is, 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 is lost. And um, so they said, okay, there needs to be some, some, some different way of interacting with business software. So it was also shortly before um, the first iPhones and the first iPads came. So really a long time ago, you can't really imagine that, but you, you, they saw that there's also another possibility of actually interacting. So um, they, they hired a bunch of um, designers at that time. So we had a clear focus on making SAP mobile in the first time, really improving the experiences there. So you can also use SAP um, while you're on the road and um, also simplifying the user interfaces a lot. So really focus on the stuff people need for their day-to-day -day work. And this really went, um, or, or we, we came over and over to this term user experience. We said, okay, this is all related to experiences. So by, by, by improving experiences, you can really make employees better. So you, may, you can give customers better, better information. And this will, will uh, well, at the end of the day, result really in, uh, in an additional business value. So this was the beginning. And then we said, okay, there needs to be other tools, other capabilities, other competencies we need to build up in order to improve experiences. So we said, okay, there's, a, there, there's artificial intelligence. So what could be easier than, than really automating stuff, supporting employees, making, giving uh, employees better experience by, by getting rid of the, uh, of the redundant tasks they have to do, um, do every day. We, um, we invested also heavily in the field of, um, of chatbots and voice bots where we said, okay, talking to your SAP system is an, at the end of the day, uh, also a great experience. And we're all not, we're not uh, already there, but the technology is there. And I, I still see that this could, could, could make the experiences of your SAP based interactions a lot, lot easier in the future. If you just say, talk to your system, get information in, get information out, just uh, using natural language. And finally, and that's also, I think what you, you're mostly referring to is um, with the acquisition of Quartrix by SAP, also the, the field of really experience management. And this really brought the things together because finally we were talking all the time ex about experiences and about how our solutions can improve employee experiences. And now we got the tooling to actually measure it. And so now finally, we have the chance to ask for actual feedback and to analyze this actual feedback. So we get into this, really into this closed loop of asking for feedback, getting the pain points, getting information of where to improve stuff, um, acting on that, improving experiences, especially in the tooling side, and then going into this, uh, this loop and this iteration over and over again with the ultimate goal to, to improve the experiences. That's a great kind of explanation too, I think of the evolution of experience. I have gone from just design and user experience through to now a, a more thoughtful, um, you know, um, experience information tied to the operational information. So that's, that's a pretty cool. So your company has a saying that experience is business value. Um, can you explain that to me in terms of employee experience and, and how it can create business value? Sure, sure. So this, this term is often, it leads to a lot of discussion all of the time. So it's really, you can really um, fight over this, over this term because it, 
what, what, what's often the problem is that experience and, and user experience and experience is general, uh, in general is often the last step. So you think it's a nice to have, you think it's something, okay, if you took care of all the rest, you have your s system in place, everything in place, then you can, can take care of user experience if you, if you still have time. But I would all, always argue that this, it's too late because it's, the, it's, it's taking care of experiences is really the, the, the easiest way of, of, of getting more out of your system and getting more and, and really supporting your employees so they can take, they can do their, their, their daily work better. I think there's a quote of, I think Richard Branson who said, okay, taking, take care of your employees and they will take care of your business. And I think that's, that's, that's really key in a lot of areas. So it's, it's key in those traditional, I, I say traditional, it's not really traditional, but SAP always comes up with the term of, of the moments that matter. Along, along your employee journey. So uh, you're hired, you're onboarded, your recruiting experience, the way the company treats you after you come back from parental leave. So those moments obviously matter um, if, you, about, if, if you think about your whole relationship with the company and how, how committed you are with everything you do. But at the, at the same time, we all, all, also always say that the employee experience also relates a lot to the tooling you are provided with. So does the, 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 the company offer you the tooling so you can do the work you need to do in the best way possible? And, and this time, and if you have a look into, into, into this image, it's, it's kind of obvious how user experience resonates with, um, uh, with business value. Because if, you, if you're lacking experiences, and we saw that a lot with, uh, with customers who had to, for one process, had to log into three or four different systems, get information out of five different screens, had to get everything together just to do one one process and so so improving that ex experience and and bringing together the information and leaving out all the information that are not relevant just just speeds up process times a lot and this makes makes you more efficient this makes each individual employee more efficient and by that obviously creates business value for 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 the overall company so it, sort of related to that question how do you see technology impacting employee experience as we go through within the coming years, are there any trends or technologies that'll help drive experience? Well, as always, technology is, should should be the enabler. So it's not, um, yeah, it, it, it needs to be used in the right way in order to to um, to improve the experiences. And and there's plenty of stuff around. So I think one one thing we I'm sure is it's there's no excuse. There's uh, about lack, lacking technology that you can't improve, to, uh, improve it, uh, experiences. Um, and at that point in time, I don't want to go into really the details. I really would like to talk about two main things I see at the moment. And the first one is obvious, and it always have to, has to come at this point in time. This is cloud. Um, especially in Germany, you know, we are a little bit um, hesitant with, with cloud computing because we always see the risks. Um, but I, I see a big, big, big potential here. And not only in a way, um, people people used to talk about in a sense of, of software as a service and, and asking about, okay, is it success factors? Is it HCM? Is it S4 HANA, uh, a public cloud edition now with SAP RISE, a private edition or, or an on-premise system? This is important, but for me, it's really all about um, having an, an, an enterprise architecture and having everything in place so you, you can really be agile. So for me, Cloud enables you to, to solve the, the urgent problems in a, in, a, in a much faster way compared to the past. Because you have the stuff in place, you have your cloud platforms, you have your extension platforms, you have your uh, the business technology platform, SAP um, talks about um, all the time. And this really allows you to, um, to see, uh, first of all, to ask for feedback, to identify the pain points, and then really go into the solution without figuring out all the time where the data is, where to deploy the stuff. It's just there, you have everything, and you can, you can become really agile by, by moving that kind of stuff to the cloud and having this kind of side-by-side -side extension with your SAP core system and having your small little helpers on top um, really improving um, um, singular use cases. So this is the, the overall idea of, of having cloud as a, as a central architectural component um, um, in your, in your uh, landscape is, is key for me. Um, the second one, and I think this, this is my favorite topic at the moment, is the whole topic around automation. So mainly automation based on, um, on artificial intelligence, because I see that this really fits the current needs. So there's, there's, a, lot of, there's, there's a lot of topics people 
and people have to do over and over again. A lot of tasks people have to do over and over again, being it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. And, and those kind of boring, redundant tasks, it's kind of easy already with the existing technology to, to automate that. So um, we had a, a project with uh, ticket dispatching, so where people really had to go through incoming emails, cluster them, sort them, them, forward them to a specific person and this kind of stuff, it's not necessary that, 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 that people have to do it. That also leads to really bad experiences because you can, you can use your time in a, in a better way. There's, there's more important stuff to do. And if we let machines do that, let, let, let that kind of robots, let that kind of digital assistants help you with those kind of topics, this really frees up time for, for more valuable work. And there's plenty of those scenarios. We had a topic with um, creating creating sales order based on uh, on incoming emails, so you don't have to manually put everything into into your SAP system. Supporting in HR with incoming applications and all that kind of stuff. So there's so so much potential, so many small use cases that that directly have an have an impact and directly have a business value. So making sure you have support your employees in that way by by giving them small assistance that that take away the redundant boring tasks from them this is this is a really interesting topic for me so one of the things that we do when we write articles for sap insider we usually end it by saying what does this mean for sap insiders for our audience so my my, my last question for you is what advice would you give to sap customers who are trying to figure out where to begin their employee experience journey well, it's a, a quite simple, but maybe a little bit frightening. It's, it's really ask your employees. Um, so they know, um, but I know asking your employees could be, it, it, always, it always leads to some expectations if you ask them, but they know where the pain points are. They know where your company lack experiences. They know where you, your tooling lack functionality and lack experiences. So for me, this is really a, a great, great starting point because it can be individual from, from one company to the other company. So we had the, um, the interesting scenario this year or last year during the pandemic with Qualtrics offering this remote pulse check. So I don't, I don't know if you know the, the scenario where they, they really gave away for free this, this survey. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, supporting um, customers um, in the first wave with people working from home in a different scenario to ask, really asking for feedback. How are you feeling? Are you lacking any tooling? And so on and so forth. And we did that with several customers, but also with our company, um, because we're also um, a, a part of, <laughs> of, of the crisis already. Um, so, and, and, and this really led to a lot of interesting insight, but which helped us to identify this, this small things that, that give direct, direct value and, and return direct value. So for me, this is something which, so ask your employees and, and make sure you provide them with the tooling and with the stuff they need at the moment. So it's at the moment, it's not really the time for this, this, this big transformation projects for this, this three to four to five year project where you forget all the rest in the meantime. So obviously those, those projects are relevant and you need to have those. But what, what, what is different for me really at the moment is you need to make sure that you don't forget your employees and your customers in the meantime, make sure you create the small little add-ons, the small little um, additional improved experiences that, that gain the business value I talked about, and just make sure by the way you build them that they can leverage after your migration. So you, you will still have your S4 migration, you will still go to success factors, but in the meantime, you can invest in the small innovations that can be leveraged and reused after your migration. And I think this is really, really the key. Make sure not to think only about the big stuff and really ask your employees to guide you to the real pain points, because this is where you can get the, also the, the rapid return on investments. That's fantastic advice. I'd, I'd like to, to thank Christian Heinrich from Savanta for joining me for this SAP Insider Contributing Expert video. Obviously, we just scratched the surface in a short uh, video like this. If you'd like to hear more from Christian, uh, I invite you to join us for the Elevate to HXM virtual summit coming up on 24th of February. Uh, Christian will be participating in a panel discussion on employee experience. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today, Christian. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the panel discussion.